Gab, both sides are claiming victory at the European Court of Justice after the verdict of the, the Super League. Who, who's right? Who has really won? So when we did the show, it was in the morning. Um, that yeah, it was the, hot. It just happened. That it had just happened. Um, so what happens is they issue the verdict, which is all written in legalese and is a million uh, pages long, and you have to sit down and read. And then they also issue a press release. And the press release is the one that's one page, readily accessible, and that says UEFA and FIFA abused their monopolistic position yeah. as competition organizers or whatever. That's what it says in the press release. That's not what it says in the verdict, to the point that UEFA have asked them, said, like, why did this weird press release go out? It's a little bit like happened with Court of Arbitration for Sport. If you okay. remember in the Man City case, it said the, the, head, the, the, uh, the title of the press release was Manchester City did not violate financial fair play. Well, that's not what the yeah. what the actual verdict said, right? I mean, it exonerated them, overturned the ban, but not it didn't actually come out and say that. So there's some confusion over this. As I understand it, having spoken to both sides, um, basically the European Court of Justice found that the rules that uh, the UEFA had in place in 2021, or they didn't really have any rules, when you had the breakaway, for a, rules which or criteria for allowing other clubs to go and organize their own competitions outside of UEFA were insufficient and not compliant with European law. Mm. Um, A22, people on the other side say, they can't make them compliant with European law um, without basically handing over this power to the clubs. Uh, UEFA say, no, no, we can. And besides, none of these clubs, you know, all these clubs are still loyal to us. We're going to find out what the interpretation, yeah, what sure. the interpretation ultimately is, uh, and I think this is going to be played out over time. One thing that's almost certain, Jules, is more litigation. Yeah, Jules, A twenty two, they did circulate a plan they that did. they said was better than the current format, and that fans would like more. Uh, you're a fan. Yeah, you're the target audience. Tell us what their format looked like, and do you like it more? So the format about the three different tiers, right? Yes, we mentioned that briefly last time with the uh, star tier, the gold tier, and then the blue tier. Yes. Depending on... 12, 12, and 2014. Yeah, how big you are. You only have to qualify for the... Already I've got an issue with the invitation and the qualification. For me, you should qualify every single season for a European competition. You should not be granted a place in a European competition because you are named Chelsea, Arsenal, City, Barcelona, Juventus, etc., etc. If you stink in the league that season and you finish 12th, there's no way you should be involved in any European But if you're mid-table in the gold tier, then and you don't get relegated, then you go back to the competition next exactly. year. Exactly. You Which, don't like that. You don't like that. You should earn your place in that gold tier, not just being given it, which is what is the case right now. So already I've got a problem with that. I, like, I've, like I said to you before, we have a new format of the Champions League coming, coming out next season. I want to see that. I want to see the Swiss model. That might be very exciting. Everybody might like it. And then we won't need a three-tier competition after that. The Swiss model might not work. We might not like it. Then we might be ready to move for something else that UEFA could do for the Champions League because this is an idea that they already had too. I'm not so sure. Today, A22 put out some numbers saying like, uh, each, so they, they'd be ready for September 2025. They can have 5 billion euros for each, each edition of those European competitions. So, and they would, they would give the club 4.6 billion. When you think about today, UEFI give 2.7 billion uh, euros to the three uh, European competitions. So that's more money. Okay, is that enough to go for them? I'm not so sure. I'm also not sure how are they going to get this money because they also said, exactly. oh, but you know, we're going to have a sh one streaming platform and the For games free. will all be free and ad supported and then there'll be a premium tier and whatever. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Do you trust these people to, to, to pull it off? Sure. Ultimately, they're going to have to convince clubs to, to that, that theirs is a more solid um, way forward yeah, and exactly. more lucrative. And a lot of reports in Spain and Portugal where it seems that a22 are leaking a lot of stuff, Gab, saying that there's no fewer than 15 big clubs that back their plan. Yeah, and they actually go and they name these clubs. As, from what I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, none of the clubs that, well, all the clubs that were in the original um, you know, Super League, yeah. Super League, they've all come out against it, yeah. except for Milan, who haven't said anything. anything. Yeah. Um, and obviously, except for Barcelona and Real Madrid, who are, who are still involved. Napoli did come out and say, this is a great idea. Like, <laughs> but it seems to me like these teams that are getting mentioned, Besiktas, Fenerbahce, Galatasaray, Porto, Benfica, 
these are teams that were not in the original yeah. Super League, so it seems like there's a lot of FOMO. They're including Lyon and Marseille. Do you, are they? I thought Marseille were originally maybe in the Super League, and Lyon could could have hope for an invitation, as in like, you know some of those teams were invited. So I, I don't know. I, I I would find that surprising, but may, maybe. Well, I mean, and Lyon, if they don't get relegated now, so yeah. Sure.